All right, welcome to the uh, first episode of the PBN podcast. Uh, we're very excited to be bringing you the first official episode um, after the trailer that we released earlier. Again, uh, we're very um, and we're uh, very excited uh, to be uh, uh, doing this uh, first episode. And uh, we have two uh, very influential guests here for our first episode. Which are, uh, and we're going to get into that uh, soon. Uh, again, if you want to be on the next episode, again, just reach out to me, Daniel Robinson. Hopefully, we can uh, set up a date and time. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's introduce our guests and the topic for today, as you can see on the screen, uh, the schedule, are um, the uh, Speaker and House Leader elections with uh, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Cardin. So let's get uh, right into it uh, with the, I'm going to introduce our guests here. Uh, we first have the uh, former Speaker. Uh, former Speaker of the House and former Senator, um, the and the current Deputy Whip of the Republican Party, Mr. Jimmy Johnson. Hey. Yeah. And we also have uh, former Senator and current Attorney General of the United States, uh, Mr. Remy Carton. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's uh, very nice for uh, both of you to be here. So let's just get right into this with the Speaker elections again we're going to be talking about the speaker of the house and the house majority uh house majority minority leader elections um first as the fec posted uh, i think uh, it was a couple days ago or yesterday uh the total results for the speaker election resulted in uh mr noah a libertarian winning 81.2 percent to 18.8 percent with uh mr thanos and so we can obviously see this is a, a very big margin here um, could you just uh, tell us um, uh, what you and we'll get into Mr. Noah in a um, a little bit later. Um, could you just tell us? We'll start with you, Mr. Johnson. What do you think of this election in general? I, I think um, most people expected Mr. Noah to win a second term, but what do you think about uh, this uh, election, Mr. Johnson? I think it's not the biggest surprise in terms of the speaker election. It's it was a blowout as projected. Noah's the incumbent as speaker. He has far more experience than Thanos, and he's shown that he is a competent speaker. I, there's no surprise there. When it comes to Hersey, Hersey is one of the more. Uh, okay, uh, if I just uh, stop you there again, we're going to get into the Mr. Noah, Mr. Uh, Hersey later. But uh, thank you for that. Um, is there anything else you want to just say, just just about this question? I think. As a Republican, I'm happy with how things have gone this cycle. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Carton, what do you think about this uh, speaker election with Mr. Noah winning by this very large margin? Well, uh, I mean, I agree with Mr. Johnson, but Mr. Noah, well, first of all, was the incumbent speaker. Uh, so it was, I think, expected, but he was starting this race from a very strong position. I don't believe he's done any demerit to his function in his first term in office. Um, and I think, yeah, it was expected that Mr. Noah would win. He's a qualified candidate. And I think the, the House decided to do for some kind of continuity. And we should also you know, know that the House, over the course of its past terms, uh, past Congresses have really narrowed the role of the Speaker. Uh, it, it's basically constrained at this point where it's not really a problem position anymore. Uh, it really is just about who can best make the house work. Um, and in that regard, I'm pretty sure the house was confident to continue with the same speaker who's proven time and time again in his various position in the house that he knows how to make the house work. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for that. No, obviously we've seen uh, Mr. Noah already won. Now we're going to move on to um, Mr. Noah himself. Um, we'll start with uh, Mr. Johnson again. What do you think of Mr. Noah's ability as speaker now that he's won a second term? Uh, how do you, uh, as, as a former speaker of the House yourself, uh, how do you judge Mr. Noah as a speaker? I think Noah's been an excellent speaker, and in his following terms, he will be an excellent speaker. He has a very thorough knowledge of how the House works, and he's... Congress in general seems to like him. He's done a good job. I expect that there, that shouldn't change over the course of this next month. Yeah, I see. Um, uh, Mr. Carton, I believe you've already elaborated a bit your opinion on Mr. Noah. Is there anything else you'd like to say about him as a speaker now that, he's had, uh, now that he has won a second term? 
about um, him as a speaker, not that much. I think I've said that already, but I, I think it's also important to, to know that the House, in the course of the past month, hasn't really been the most active it's always been. Of course, that has nothing to do with the speaker himself. Uh, but um, I also think that one of the things we should look for in, in the speaker's next term is if he's actually challenged in a way by the House, um, if the House were to become a bit more active and do those more legislation than it has over the course of the past month, uh, then maybe we'll, we'll really see uh, what Speaker Noah is made of um, in, in face of this kind of, or this kind of active House. Uh, but then again, uh, judging by his past experience and what he's shown us so far in all his previous positions, I'm pretty sure he'll be up to the task. Yeah, um, and I would just like to ask you as a follow-up, we'll also ask Mr. Johnson later, but Mr. Carton, how do you believe um, Noah uh, stands up compared to other speakers such as Mr. Pluribus or Mr. Ian that have served in the past? How do you think Mr. Noah compares to them? Well, I mean, I, as I said before, I'm, I'm of the opinion that at the moment the speakership has been deprived of any kind of real partisan power uh, and the position really is about making the house work. So it's becoming increasingly difficult to compare speakers in that regard because anyone who doesn't fuck up on the job really is doing the job properly. Um, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, again, I haven't seen it off or, or, or Mr. Noah of that course in the past like, over the last month because it's been a rather sleepy mouth in the house. Uh, so I think it would be hard to cast a judgment right now, especially comparing him with previous speaker who might have hard to contend with the more Ruckus types. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Johnson, how do you believe Mr. Noah stacks up against other speakers that have served in the past? As Mr. Carton said, it's very difficult to compare. Uh, two of the names you mentioned were Pluribus and Ian. They presided over the House in a much different time in Congress's history. Uh, Pluribus was the first speaker to bring a sense of order to the House. And in those early days, there were a lot of differences. Committees weren't as prevalent. This is a very difficult comparison to make. I can't necessarily make one. Yes, uh, it is indeed a little hard to compare Mr. Noah to previous speakers. But along um, with this speaker election, we've also uh, have an election. For, we've also had the election for majority and minority leaders of the House, which will be our uh, next topic. Um, so again, this, uh, this topic is now in the House of Leader elections. Uh, we've seen, uh, the results posted by the FEC, Mr. Hersey, uh, a Republican won 65.6%, uh, to, uh, compared to Mr. Uh, I mean, uh, Ms. Kelly, I'm sorry, uh, her 34.4%. Um, uh, we'll start with, um, Mr. Carm this time. How do you think that, uh, how, what do you think of, uh, Mr. Hersey's ability? Uh, how do you think he'll function as a House Majority Leader? Well, one thing I hope, uh, in the line of my previous comment, is that Mr. Hersey will be able to insufflate some kind of new energy uh, in the House. Um, and the issue, on my side at least, uh, I, I, in my experience uh, with Mr. Hersey, I, mean, I don't believe he's high, he has the kind of you know, strong and, and serious record that someone like Speaker Noah would have. Uh, and... It's pretty much a blank page, I think, uh, as to what he'll be able to achieve as a majority leader. All right, uh, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, you're a Republican, and Mr. Hersey is a Republican. What do you think of uh, Mr. Hersey's ability and how, he'll, and how he will function as a majority leader? Uh, I've known Hersey for the past 16 months. He is someone who, once he puts his mind on something, he will not let it go. But... Uh, while Hersey might not have experience, so to speak, in the sense of leading a party in the House, I have belief that he'll learn on the job, and by the end of his, by the end of this next month, he'll have done really well. He's he'll have performed really well. All right, uh, thank you for that. And um, also, as we've seen uh, in the past, uh, I believe it was around a month ago, or maybe a little bit more, uh, or a little bit less. A resolution was passed in the House that um, I believe it, I, yeah, I believe it was passed that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that the majority leader now picks independent committee seats. Um, 
could you, uh, uh, me and Mr. Johnson, we'll start with you. Uh, do you think that, obviously, Mr. Hersey is a Republican, he's fairly heavily inclined to pick uh, independents that have that are right-leaning um, in, um, in their political nature. Do you believe that this will have any bearing on this congressional uh, session? Uh, I disagree. Uh, I know Hersey is loyal and he'll want to pick someone leaning right, but I also know him as someone who is bipartisan and believes in bipartisanship. I expect that he'll balance it out somewhere there. All right, I think that uh, I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll blatantly pick all the right wing independents for committee positions. All right, uh, Mr. Carton, could you give your thoughts on uh, Mr. Hersey uh, picking independent committee seats? Well, I mean, the goal of all the of the rules change, which you mentioned, uh, was exactly that to allow the majority to actually function function as, as a majority. Uh, because experience from previous houses showed that um, winning the majority leader election, being recognized as the majority in the house, didn't necessarily mean that you would actually control the house because uh, independent picks and committees would be, uh, would be you know, I, I won't say random, but difficult to, to, to foresee at where those independents would lead. And the idea by allowing the majority, the majority leader to actually pick the independent committee was to allow them to actually do what you just described, to pick, to pick independent members who would lean in the same direction as the official majority leader have, thereby facilitating the committee uh, that, have majority support, that would have majority support in the House, instead of what we saw in previous houses where, you know, the committee would divide along partisan line, then a bill that would have broad support in the House as a whole would eventually get blocked because an independent member would go, would vote with the minority on this bill. So I don't know if we should expect, you know, Majority Leader Hersey to, to take that into account and to make independent picks of committee, which would actually be right. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, and I wouldn't blame him if he gets to do that because that was the very spirit of this change in the rules. All right, thank you for that. Now, uh, obviously, we've seen um, in the House uh, majority leader elections, Mr. Hersey won, uh, but also his opponent, uh, Ms. Kelly, uh, as a Democrat, she also ran. So uh, could you, uh, we'll start with Mr. Carton. Uh, could you please give your thoughts on uh, Ms. Kelly, um, how, um, how basically her uh, ability and what do you think of her as a, as a minority leader? Well, I mean, from what I'm seeing from, from Ms. Kelly, since she, she arrived in Congress, I, I believe she, she is a qualified member. I believe she, she could very well be a, a good minority. At least she's shown she is able, she's swelling, uh, and she has some reasons of energy, which is always way upon. Um, and the issue here is also that she is basically a blank page. Uh, her tenure as minority leader is her first time in a major office, not just member of Congress would actually be a figure in Congress. So we'll have to, to wait and see. But again, from what I've seen from her, she seems to have every ability that she could exploit to make the best use of a posi new position. And uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, what do you think of Ms. Kelly? Well, uh, I don't actually know too much about the minority leader, but I've seen that she is capable on the House floor and that the Democratic Party seems to respect her. I see. And um, obviously, Miss Kelly, um, she's uh, a, um, I think it's safe to say that uh, uh, she's joined Congress uh, at a later time than Mr. Hersey. Um, could you tell us, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, how do you think the House would turn out if she was elected majority leader. I'm really unsure. Uh, as we as we know, the session hasn't really begun yet. I'd have to see. This is something that I don't know too much about, Miss Kelly. I'd have to see. And uh, think of that. And uh, Mr. Carton. Um, what do you believe if uh what what do you what would you believe happen uh if Miss Kelly was elected majority leader? 
Well, again, I think it would remain to be seen, and we won't have we won't have the opportunity to see it. At least, at least um, uh, and, um, again, as I said, I believe that she has to be in your hand every ability to be an effective leader in the house. We're very minority or the majority. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I'm not really comfortable, you know, dealing with hypothetical. What if she won? The fact is, well, she lost up this election, uh, and now it's up to her to prove from the position of minority leader that she would be able to actually leave the house and not just remain in the minority. In the same way, that Mr. Hersey would have to to prove in his position as majority leader that he can deliver on the job and, you know, in a sense, make go after his try. All right, thank you for that. And obviously, um, again, this is, um, as you said before, this is a hypothetical because uh, Ms. Kelly did not win. Um, and being related to the uh, elections here, um, if we, we're going to move on to the actual, this is our uh, last topic, but we're going to move on to the actual um, House Majority Minority Leader elections. Uh, could you tell us, um, Mr. Johnson, who did you think uh, was going to win the Majority Minority Leader elections? <clears throat> I saw it as Percy the full way through. He's respected throughout Congress. He's well known, and not to mention that the Republican web team is fairly strong, and we were certainly working hard to make sure he was elected. I see. And uh, Mr. Carton, uh, who did you believe uh, was going to win the majority and minority leader elections? Well, I did expect um, the Republicans from the right. To retain their position as the majority uh, in the House, um, I think that at the moment, you know, most kids are on the left are either in the Senate, uh, with very strong progressive majority, or in cabinet. And some of them, and few of them, in state houses, but you know, um, there, there was no real experience contender, the kind of which could have been able to organise a real strong challenge to to Mr. Hersey. Uh, and I think at the end of the day on this election, the, which I expected, and I think we saw that, uh, the sheer numbers of, of the right, when got a little bit mobilized, would give Mr. Hersey a victory. All right, I see. And uh, we've obviously seen um, the margin of this election, Mr. Hersey again uh, winning 63% to Ms. Kelly's 34%. Uh, Mr. Carton, did you uh, believe that um, the margin here of election, do you believe it would uh, turn out like this or did you believe it would be a little bit closer or uh, a little bit, uh, or did, or did you believe that the margin would be a bit bigger? Well, um, it's always, you know, it's always been hard to when it comes to the house, uh, things there are very fluid. All right, uh, I see, and Mr. Right. John... All right. Uh, do you have anything more to say, Mr. Carton? No. Oh, oh, sorry. All right. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, what do you believe of this election margin? Sixty-three percent to thirty-four percent. Did you believe it would be it would be bigger or a little bit smaller? Well, while I did expect a Hersey victory, I didn't expect I didn't expect it to be this large. But it goes to show how well liked Hersey is to our Congress and how well our rep team has performed this election. All right, I see. All right, uh, thank you for that. Uh, that concludes uh, the first episode of the PBN podcast. Uh, again, that was um, current Deputy Whip and former Speaker, former Senator, uh, Mr. Jimmy Johnson, and uh, current U.S. Attorney General, Mr. Carton, speaking. Uh, again, uh, thank you for um, thank you um, thank uh, thank you uh, both of you for coming on the, on the podcast. Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, it's been great to be here. All right, you're very welcome. Um, again, this uh, concludes the first episode of the PBN podcast. Uh, we hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any feedback, uh, a form uh, might come out a little bit later, or it might. We're, uh, we're still working on that. Uh, again, if you have any feedback or uh, constructive criticism, uh, uh, feel free to mention or contact me, uh, Danny Robinson. And again, we hope you liked it. And um, uh, if you would like to be a guest on the second episode, again, please reach out to me. Uh, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.